lab environment and in this diagram as you can see now we have our another exchange server ex2 as we are preparing for DAG we have done some additional setup that we have uh, instead of one network card like we had previously in each of our exchange server now we have two network cards uh, first one as before it's for our internal network however the second card that we just added on two servers and this will be for these this network card will be for replication network keep this in mind your internal network and replication network needs to be on a separate subnet it's a best practice whenever you configure your additional card on your exchange server make sure that number one that your card like in my case uh, I just rename it to replication to just to, to it, it makes it th makes things easy when we look at it and the mapping network here is production so we have two cards it's always better to rename it and if you go to the properties of the application NIC you see client for Microsoft networks is not selected file and printer sharing is also not selected the only things which are selected here is QoS package scheduler this is optional if you want you can select it it's up to you Microsoft recommend that you select IP version 4 of course as well as this link layer topology discovery mapper and responder though I have been I, I, I have been testing in the past by unselecting these and it works fine but that's what the best practice say and that's what we should follow when we talk about an IP address for in the replication network card you will just specify IP address and submit mask that's it no default gateway no DNS if your target server or the another DAC partner is on another network all you have to do you manually add network route using the net shell command you can use IP route also however that's what Microsoft recommends that you use net shell command to add static routes don't add gateway here and then under the advanced make sure that this network is not selected to register itself with DNS and if you like that's what I prefer I always disable that BIOS over TCP IP so these are the few things you need to just take care for replication network as far as the production network everything as it is like before client for Microsoft file and print sharing QS responders IP4 and IP6 IP6 I mean I'm not using it though but it's just selected everything as default is selected another thing once we are in this network connection view and you press alt key you will see this menu will appear you go to advanced advanced settings that will take you to the network binding order make sure the production NIC or a mappy network NIC is on top and then your application network okay you might have something like this because replication NIC you added later so all you have to do just change the binding order that production or mappy network is on top replication network second so this is it and yes another thing uh, with respect to DAG that we have another server over here let me just file share witness uh, there is a server called file server this will serve as file share witness this server uh, have file server role installed which is a requirement if you are using uh, any server as a file share witness which is not an exchange server then that server needs to have a file server role installed and uh, you need to add exchange trusted subsystem group into the local administrator 
Uh, file server role, it's typically, uh, it's not a big deal. It's just very easy to install, nothing else. Witness directory will automatically be created. And another most important thing, that the risk layout has to match on source server and target server. In source, if your database on E, log on L, then you have to have drive E and L on target server as well. Because when you will add servers to the part of DAG, uh, Exchange will automatically copy the file from the source, uh, database file from the source server E drive to the E drive of the target server and log files from the L drive of the source server to the L drive of the target server. It will automatically create the directory structure for you. So make sure the disk layout is the same. Uh, it stays the same on source server as well as the target server. So these are the few things that we need to take care. Yeah, one more thing here that uh, in my lab, I'm using DNS round robin. Uh, in practical environment, it's always better to have a hardware load balancer. You will register a logical IP for this namespace in your DNS, and then your load balancer will forward uh, clients uh, to client access service proxy to these servers and balance the load. Uh, this is what happens in real environment, uh, but in my lab, I don't have a load balancer, so I'm using DNS round robin, which works fine. Even it works in practical environment, uh, okay, as long as you have Windows clients and Outlook web app clients, there should be no problem. Uh, however, for performance reasons and for better functionality, better failover, people tend to go towards load balancer. So this is it, my friend, and we'll see you, uh, I will see you in next video.